If you have Hashimoto's and you're pregnant, how much iodine is safe? Well, that's the question I'm gonna answer in this video for you today. So there's been a lot of controversy for some reason about iodine and Hashimoto. So obviously Hashimoto's is an autoimmune thyroid condition. And what you have to know kind of physiologically is iodine is necessary for thyroid hormone uh, production because like T3, like the technical name of that is triiodothyronine. There's iodine in that, right? And thyroxine is T4. There's iodine in that too. But we know from studies that have been going on for years and years and years that excessive iodine can definitely trigger Hashimoto's. I've got some other videos on that. You can look it up. We're not going to really discuss that part. Uh, so because we know that excessive iodine seems to promote a cytokine and a chemokine mediated process that causes targeting of your thyroid gland, uh, people are sort of like wondering, well, if, if you're pregnant and you have Hashimoto's, how much iodine can you take? Well, fortunately, uh, there has been some uh, work done that looked directly at that. Now, some more kind of thyroid iodine facts. So uh, when you're pregnant and you're like in an iodine replete country, your thyroid gland increases its size during pregnancy normally, around 10 to 15%. Now, if you're in an iodine deficient area, thyroid gland really swells up. It could be like, you know, 40, 50%. So you do need uh, thyroid, excuse you do need iodine for thyroid function in pregnancy. Uh, now the developing baby needs uh, maternal iodine. It depends completely on the, the mom for its iodine sources. So if the mom is iodine deficient and then becomes a hypothyroid from that, then you can have a lot of uh, complications neurodevelopmentally with the baby, including mental retardation. Now you gotta also remember though, if you're taking levothyroxine, right, T4, you don't need iodine because you are taking a thyroid hormone, so you don't need iodine for thyroid hormones anymore if you're, if you're taking that, but your developing baby still does, okay? So some important research came out where they looked at pregnant women with Hashimoto's and they said, hey, how much iodine can a woman take during pregnancy and it's safe, meaning it doesn't raise her thyroid antibody levels um, it, doesn't, it doesn't really affect it. So kind of back up a bit, another bit of history. Because iodine is so important, a couple different recommendations have been made. For example, uh, in the United States, the recommended daily allowance of iodine for a pregnant woman is around 190 to 220 micrograms per day. Okay? Now, the World Health Organization suggests around 150 micrograms per day as, as uh, daily intake. And the American Thyroid Association says, hey, you should take some sort of a uh, oral supplement, whether it's a multivitamin or not, that's got, you know, around 150, 200 micrograms of iodine in it uh, to make sure you get the adequate amount of iodine. Now, iodine is found in foods. And I'm going to put a chart up here that's got uh, the, uh, uh, the different amounts in it. So you do get iodine from fruit, food and you definitely get iodine from iodized salt, but you may not be getting enough to kind of meet those requirements that I was just talking about. But again, the controversy still is if you have Hashimoto's, how much can you take? Well, I'm going to tell you that in my 20 some odd years of doing this, I've only had two Hashimoto's patients, two, that could take supplemental amounts of iodine. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, for me, you know, supplemental means 300, 400, 600, 700, 900, 1,000 micrograms of iodine per day. Those are supplemental amounts. For me, 200 micrograms or less per day that you're taking in is, is pretty small. So I walked into reading this study thinking, well, they're probably going to find something like that because I know from my own experience, I've got lots of cases of patients that took iodine because somebody told them to or they read a book or whatever, and it made them worse. And I've had people that took iodine for whatever reason, and it gave them Hashimoto's. It triggered them. So I walked in thinking, oh, that's probably what it's going to be. And here's what they found. They found that 150 micrograms, uh, 100 to 150 micrograms, really has no effect on a pregnant woman's antibody levels, right? Her thyroid peroxidase antibody levels. Now, that's not going to hold for everybody. But generally speaking, that's probably what's going to be true for most people. So here's my takeaway about telling you this. Uh, if you're working with someone that, and you have Hashimoto's, right, and you're working with someone that's suggesting a large amount of iodine per day, I would be careful with that, okay? Because the tolerable, tolerable upper limit of iodine, which is basically what is the dose in the general population that's probably going to cause problems, is about 1,000 micrograms per day established here in the U.S. 
In other regions of the world, it's a little bit different. So if someone's suggesting that you take that you take a thousand micrograms or more, you might want to get a second opinion on that because taking that much iodine has a much higher probability of making your Hashimoto's worse than 150 micrograms per day. So. And 150 micrograms to 220 micrograms is what you're going to find in almost all prenatal vitamins that have a little bit of iodine in it because you don't want to be iodine deficient because it can make you hypothyroid. But again, if you have Hashimoto's and you're pregnant and you're already taking levothyroxine or Synthroid, you don't need iron for that, but your developing baby still does, right? So please make sure you're working with someone that understands these specifics about iodine and is not recommending you overdose on iodine because... What the literature says and what my own experience says is that can be very, very problematic. And, you know, pregnancy is a, uh, you know, we don't want to mess up anything during pregnancy, right? So don't OD on iodine, but around 150 micrograms per day is probably going to be fine. So I hope that helps. We'll see you next time.